Bonjour and welcome to another tourdefrancetips.com video. Today I'm going to be talking about packing smart and packing light and I guess travelling smart and light. There's a lot to talk about today. First up, I'm going to talk about packing your helmet. Now, one of my friends before has had the unpleasant experience of getting uh, off the plane and having his helmet in his checked luggage being cracked. So, best when I, once I heard that, I got one of these Giro pods, um, helmet pods. Uh, on the website, I'll put a link in this post that the video is in. Um, on the site, there's a comparison between this and the Evo C. They're both um, both basically as good as each other. They're not that expensive. Um, Forty dollars. This is nice and light. So basically, my helmet goes inside, and I also put my sunglasses in there. So even though I've got the Oakleys with the um, vault, that all goes in there, so I know where it all is. And I take that with me on the plane. Uh, I don't like to put uh, expensive or valuable stuff like uh, GPS or or um, camera gear or any electronics or, or glasses or anything like that in check baggage in case it gets broken or disappears because um, bags do get opened. Next up talking about packing smart. Uh, if like me you've got team support on your trip for the for the tap in particular or basically this applies to anyone um, and it might seem obvious but it wasn't obvious to me a couple of years ago uh, is a GPS Garmin 1390T. This is only $200 or so. Um, for those of you watching in Australia, JB Hi-Fi has gone for $180 with uh, Australian maps. This one's from eBay UK because it came with, um, and it was only $200, it, it comes with Europe 2011 maps. You can get a Garmin um, $100 US dollar upgrade for life for Europe maps, so that appeals to me. So for a tap, uh, my girlfriend had the car and she will be bringing it over to the finish. So this will take a lot of the stress uh, out of driving for her and, and not just for her, for anyone in general. Uh, driving in Europe, especially around the small towns and especially with a big car or a camper van, can be pretty overwhelming. Um, you can get lost easily. The streets sometimes aren't laid out. So having a GPS um, makes a lot, of spent, uh, a lot of sense, especially on the big highways. There's a lot of interchanges. So getting around the bigger um, areas, you know, Germany and, and around France and stuff, around some of the bigger areas can be a nightmare. So having one of these makes things easy. Alright, for recovering um, from something like a tap, uh, the tap, but also for promoting um, you know, good muscle condition on long haul flights, uh, I recommend taking something like a baseball, or two tennis balls in a soccer is what I use, uh, or something like a foam roller, it doesn't have to be this big, it can be half this size, uh, usually they're a little bit, they've got a larger diameter, about 10 centimetres or 15 centimetres. This is nice and light, fits in a bike bag or if you're not taking a bike, check luggage, um, work your legs, work your back. Uh, I'll put a link to another video about using these uh, in this post as well. So that's definitely worth it, especially if you're doing a tap because you, um, you'll be able to really look after, your, look after your body after such a big intense ride. Uh, if you're going to be doing a lot of climbing uh, in Europe or wherever it is you're going, if you're, not, if you're watching this video, not just for the Tour de France or a tap, uh, base layer. Now, lots of people use them, lots of people don't. Um, these craft ones are only $25 on Australian dollars on Wiggle or Chain Reaction. They're awesome. Riding uphill, if it's hot, you just unzip and they wick the moisture away. Riding back downhill, zip up nice and warm. Likewise, a wind vest, not in yellow, hopefully. This is all they had for me. Um, so this is plastic, obviously. A lot of people in Europe use them, or most people actually, if they're doing big climbs. They just pack up nice and light, and nice and small, they're very light. Jersey pocket, um, whip them on on the way back down to stop you getting a really cold chest um, and potentially getting quite sick. Uh, when I came off the Vontu in 2009, it was that cold. I was shivering for an hour and a half afterwards. I was chilled to the bone. I was lucky I didn't get really sick. So something like that, I think the craft ones are $40 or something like that. Something like that is really worth it. I'll put links to all these products in the post. So if you need any of this stuff, just check those out. Next up. Shoes. Shoes take up room. They're not that heavy, but um, if you're like me, you like to go for a run when you're away, or you need a shoe that will cover you for everything, something like some Nikes. These are $100 on Wiggle, so um, they're not super expensive. Or North Face, about the same price. Uh, good. Both of these are good for hiking and also for running. Um, by hiking, I just mean getting around towns, or if you like doing proper hiking. Uh, and in transit too, so they'll basically do for everything and for going out. Next, I want to talk about um, camera gear. So, usually when, or the last two years when I've gone overseas, this is the type of stuff I've taken. Body, telephoto, flash, 
and another lens. Now, uh, all of this stuff is overkill. Um, unless you're getting paid professionally, there's no need to take all this stuff, or unless you're super, super keen um, to get some great photos on, I guess, of the scenery, the sights, and um, especially the tour. Something like this is awesome for the Tour de France because you can shoot down the road on a big climb, get nice and tight on the riders. Um, but really, uh, having, having done this and speaking from personal experience, dragging all this stuff around and, and possibly a laptop in such a, in such a big bag, it's an utter pain in the neck, it's not good for your back. Um, really, you're not going to take this up a hill. If you're going to watch a tour stage up a hill, dragging this stuff up a hill is madness. I've done it before, twice. I didn't learn my lesson after the first time. Um, it can really damage your back like it's done for me, so I'm just warning you. Uh, the utility of having all this sort of stuff is is um, pretty marginal in my opinion. Do yourself a favour and just get a really good little point and shoot. Uh, when you're riding, jersey pocket, you can snap really good photos. Um, we all know point and shoots these days um, are really high quality. Likewise, if you're with your partner, you can get some great photos like that um, together or the sights and sounds. Um, they shoot video. These things will cover you for 80-90% of what you need. Uh, I know that you might get there and you'll, you'll say, oh, that sunset would be really good with, the, um, <clears throat> with my proper camera, but uh, when you think about it, you'll get home and you have hundreds and hundreds of photos off a camera, especially a camera like this. Um, how often do you really look at them? You only really need a couple of really good photos from a point and shoot. Um, put them in a book in, in Aperture or something like that, and that's a, that's a good way to save a lot, of, um, a lot of weight and also heartache because you don't have to be sitting there thinking about... Um, where's all that stuff or making sure it doesn't get broken or having insurance for it because it's expensive to insure stuff like this on a trip. So if you really must take a DSLR, just choose a body and a lens that will do you for everything. Um, these lenses are quite specific so that's why I usually take two but if you've got something like a, um, like a 3200 or something like that, that will do you for the whole trip I think. Next up, bike. Fortunately for me, um, I've got a really light Look 586, thanks to the guys at Fitzroy Cycles. Um, so I save a lot of weight by having a bike like this. Hopefully your bike's pretty light as well. Um, obviously you won't be taking a bike with tubs, or I hope you're not, because that's just overkill. Clinches are fine. Um, with the bike, uh, take the bare, the bare minimum, or the, or the spare essentials as I like to call them. So toolkit, a couple of spare um, tubes. Maybe a spare tyre, but I don't think that's really necessary. The main thing is a rear derailleur hanger. If you're if you're taking your bike and you um you snap the hanger on the way over, or it gets snapped in your, in in transit, uh, you might have trouble finding a rear derailleur hanger, especially if it's something like a um like a specialised that they don't sell a lot of over there. It look might be okay. Um, so something like that you might want to take spare pedals. Not obvious, but last year I had a busted broken um, Shimano pedal. I couldn't find a Shimano replacement anyway, so I buy a whole new set of pedals. Um, so that was a pain in the bum, but really how often is that going to, going to happen? Uh, overall, with packing, we all, or at least I know I do, and, and there are others out there, we overpack. Uh, I know there's an the old adage of you'd rather be looking at it than looking for it, but um, I personally would much rather the convenience of travelling light and being able to get around without hauling heaps of bags and heavy stuff around. Uh, if you're going to be in a camper van, having less stuff just makes total sense. Um, if you're in a big camper van, okay, and there's a bit of storage space, but if you're in a smaller one and you're just having to climb over bags, I've, I've done it before, it's a pain in the neck, you don't want to do it, just pack light. Um, so put everything out. Uh, for those of you who've seen the video that I did from last year, you, you'll see that I had four A4 sheets full of just stuff um, that I didn't really need. Char it's when you start adding charges and, and th you know two or three pairs of shoes and four jumpers, you don't need it all. If you get desperate for clothing and whatever when you're over there, you can buy stuff. Um, Europe's not super expensive, I don't think, so, uh, you know, if you need another pair of shoes for going out, you can get a cheap pair of shoes or whatever, or you need another t-shirt, you can get a cheap t-shirt or whatever, or you need bike parts, there's lots of bike shops, um, you, so you'll be, you'll be fine in that regard. Next thing I want to talk about is document backup. Uh, usually I'll make hundreds, not hundreds, but lots of copies of all my documentation, leave a copy with that person, copy with that person, scan it, upload it. Now with Dropbox, it's all so much easier, you just scan it. Uh, upload a copy to Dropbox, you can share a folder with a friend if you want a friend to have access. Uh, you know, put Dropbox on your iPhone or on your Android phone and or on your laptop if you're taking one. Sync it all up, you've got multiple electronic copies. Uh, if your partner or the person, people you're travelling with have got 
uh, smartphones like an iPhone or whatever, you can give them access as well. So you've all got redundant copies. Uh, if the worst happens, you lose a passport or something, you get mugged, heaven forbid, or something like that, uh, you'll be fine. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is food. Uh, I hate generally. I generally hate uh, air airplane food. It's terrible. Uh, I've never travelled first class, so I've never had the Neil Perry inspired Qantas first class food. Uh, Qantas, someone from Qantas, if you're watching, I'd love to try it. Um, so for me, I take my own food, and that generally consists of uh, some cans of tuna. Um, normally, you'll get salad on on a flight, so you can mix the tuna in. Um, I take some nuts, so almonds and cashews. I take protein powder that I can make up a shake with water or milk, so a protein powder that works with either. Also an avocado and banana, so usually I take a lunchbox and have all this food because it's nice and fresh. I find when you're eating food, the hot food from um, airlines, even if it's vegetarian, actually vegetarian ends up usually being worse. Um, you could get three hot meals that are exactly the same for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Um, acidic tomato with hot food, it just it saps, it saps the energy out of you, especially up at 30,000 feet. You get off the plane, you feel horrible. Um, I'd much rather eat less and just drink a lot of water and a few Bacardis, not too many. Um, and for cereal, something like Kapai Puku, two words, K-A-P-I, K-A-P-A-I-P-U-K-U. -A -A uh, Google it. It's made, it's made by an Australian company. It is amazing stuff. It's all seeds um, and some raisins. There's no cereals or anything like that. It's very... Um, it's very light, really. You don't need a lot of it. It's got a lot of energy. You just have a little bit with um, milk or even juice, um, and it just fills you up, and it's awesome. It's really, really good. After you've um, you've eaten it, you don't feel um, you know overwhelmed by the food or anything like that. So, just a couple of um, you know a couple of serves of that on a, on a long haul flight is more than enough, and it actually works as a normal like a, a meal replacement for a normal meal as well. So, just little things like that um, can help. When you you know when you get off the plane at the other end, you just feel um, a lot better and ready to go. And that's you know I guess that's all about travelling smart. So we have covered a lot today. I hope it helped. Um, some of this stuff will be obvious to the seasoned travellers amongst you. Um, some of it might not be. So I hope some of it has provoked you into thinking um, about ways you can cut weight and travel a little bit smarter and lighter. Uh, and inside the post there'll be some links to all these um, products. Um, if you need any of any of this sort of stuff, and also a packing list um, that you can download and print out, and um, it's got links as well. And you know, basically, just put your stuff on there and cross it off as you go. And the 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 key thing is pack light. Um, I'll put a link to a guy called Chris Gillibo to his website. He's been, I think, I already mentioned this to most of the countries around the world. Check it out. Like I said, he's um, he knows what he's talking about, and uh, his main thing is pack light. Um, yeah, thanks for watching and um, see you in another video soon.